Hey, it's Tim here. In today's video, we're talking about Tableau Einstein. Uh, no, no, that's the wrong. Sorry, start again. Hey, it's Tim here. In today's video, we're talking about Tableau with Agent Force. And let's try again. Hey, it's Tim here. In today's video, we're talking about Tableau Next, the next version of Tableau. Yeah, it's a bit confusing. As ever, let's get stuck in. Late last week on Feb 27th, Tableau announced the new name for the experience that I recently made a video for. It's called Tableau Next. Now, this product has had many different names, and I think it's important just to give that context, give that timeline. And it starts really with Tableau Einstein. This was the first name that we heard a while back and uh, when Tableau showcased the fourth wave, the name that came immediately after that was Tableau Einstein. That's what we got familiar with. And then at the DataFam Europe event, it was very obvious that name wasn't going to stick. And a lot of the product devs there were trying to erase that from their memory. And I think the name that they settled with was Tableau with Agent Force. Now, this wasn't really a name, it turns out. This was more of a, a placeholder. And um, we now have the final name, which is Tableau Next. And so that begs two questions, like what is Tableau Next? And why Tableau Next? And what happens to the core products um, in the product suite? And so what I wanted to do is go over to Southern Jones blog post. So I've got it here on screen. I just talk through this name change a little bit and I kind of want to end the video on a story like a, a little parable of Greek mythology just to sort of I think highlight an issue with these frequent name changes. First up, what is Tableau Next? If you've heard anything about Tableau Einstein or Tableau with Agent Force already, it's essentially the same thing. The video I last made on this channel is actually the same as this. It just didn't have a name and a placeholder. So we have to go back and change all those names. It's actually quite interesting. If you go to the Tableau website, they do this very sneaky control find and replace because you'll see that this announcement was on February the 27th. But if I go to this post, it was written October the 24th, but it wasn't called Tableau Next at that point. It was called Tableau Einstein. So it can get a little bit confusing, especially if you're looking for the metadata to give you the chronology because it's there and it's not there. Um, but they do this very well. Actually, the last time when we had the change from Tableau Einstein to Tableau Agent Force, the exact same thing happened. It was a little bit uh, of a change around the website. Now, what is Tableau Next? Um, I'm about to do a video that summarizes this in about 10 to 15 minutes. It's a shorter version of the previous video I did. And in that video, I walk through the entire platform. It's actually a very popular video. Go ahead and check it out. But that at the moment is the best way that I can tell you what this is because it's still a work in progress. Tableau have not officially announced this as it's not live. But as is with Salesforce, they like to do a lot of marketing up front to let you know what something is. And as part of that, they seem to be to test names. Um, as part of that process. And so we have this blog post that basically goes through the product and um, you have a platform diagram. This is a very different platform diagram to what we've seen before. Salesforce generally has an issue with platform diagrams. It generally doesn't envision the world any other than their own world, basically. So the only thing you ever see inside of a di platform diagram like this is Salesforce's own products, Salesforce's own context. But it, as an analytics user, as data people, as it were, we tend to have a lot more context than this inside of our platform diagrams or architecture diagrams but it's a decent sort of representation of i think how they want you to use the platform it's not a decent representation of how your data moves through the platform and i've given that feedback to tableau behind the scenes i think people need a much clearer depiction of how this platform is going to work and i think there is that description forming behind the scenes it's just not public yet and that, that's one of the most frustrating things but nonetheless, Tableau Next is essentially the new vision that Tableau or Salesforce has for Tableau going forward. Now, you might also wonder what's happening to the Tableau that I use and love. And actually, they answer that question here inside of the blog post. So if I think if I actually go to this FAQ post from back in uh, 24, which is a bit disconnected, they do actually cover off that question. So they do talk about Tableau Cloud, Tableau Service, CRM Analytics, and essentially those are not going anywhere. The best way to think of those is to think of those as Tableau Core. So this is a terminology that I've heard being used internally at Tableau, and I think I have the decency to be able to share. If I don't, whoops, but nonetheless, you can think of Tableau products as Tableau Core, Tableau Server, Tableau Desktop, Tableau Prep. And the point about the new version of Tableau, Tableau Next, is that it's very much an experience-led platform. It's very much focused on the kind of experience Salesforce likes to give its customers to have one complete ecosystem. And it's trying to do a couple of things. Number one, it's trying to make 
something that's more organic to Salesforce, which makes sense. They acquire Tableau. I think they're trying to make that investment pay off. But additionally, it's also trying to tackle some of the challenges that I think people have complained about with Tableau. So things like formatting, templating, just making it easy to work through the platform. I think all of those capabilities are actually going to be very interesting. Now, I don't know if they're going to be good. I don't know if they're going to work. But there is one interesting side to this, which is, you know, um, Tableau keep bringing up this slide in conference talks that talk about the fact that Tableau in general has tried to solve this problem. And we've solved this problem for what is still a minority of, of users. So they talk about this sort of gap between your uh, very... Um, capable enabled data analysts but there's still this gap to the rest of the business analysts and i always joke about this because we call this the mind of the gap slide uh, between me and ravi when we do our podcast but it's actually interesting because i would also really say that this represents the messaging that salesforce has which is you know over here you've got your 20 percent, and over here you've got your 80 percent. and i was listening to the stephen bartlett podcast like a couple of weeks ago and I, I appreciate that his podcast is is always a lot of yes people who think anything is possible and it can come sometimes it can be a little bit unrealistic but there was this interesting quote which i heard which was about to make a product for the 80 percent, you have to be willing to piss off the 20 percent. <laughs> and i think that's what salesforce is going here and i, I mean that in the nicest possible way i think salesforce realizes that if it's going to make a mass appeal product it does have to start changing the way it, its product works for the majority of end users. Now, this creates an interesting balance because obviously the core users are the biggest audience of the, of the product and also going to have to manage this uh, new platform as well. So I hope it works out. I hope it's successful. I hope that sort of strategy works out because this constant name changing really does create friction with the current sort of core user base, the, the users who will be continuing to use Tableau Core. Now, I wanted to end this video on something a little bit more poignant and this sort of <laughs> story of a Greek mythological kind of character called Proteus. Now, Proteus's superpower is his wisdom. He's got this incredible ability to be able to give wisdom upon people who, you know, who seek it. But in order to access this wisdom, you have to do something very challenging, and that is he also has this ability to change form. He can go from uh, being a lion to being a snake to changing to water to changing to fire, all these sort of different things, right? And the only way to access his wisdom is by being able to hold on to him as he changes through all these forms. And if you happen to do that, um, he, he gets bored and essentially grants you this ability to use his power. And I think it has many let's say, similarities to the constant name changes that we have with Tableau. I think the most poignant one is that it doesn't matter how many times he changes. Underneath, his core ability is still the same. His wisdom is still ultimately the same. But with each change, he has a new identity that people have to get familiar with. Each new identity is difficult to grasp, uh, very hard to hold on to, and that's sort of part of the trick. And then lastly, every time he changes, I think, People lose sight of who he is. Um, it's easy to lose track of what he is at the end of the day. And so there are some similarities here. And I think it's very poignant because in all these name changes, I do think we've hit max fatigue. And I really hope we don't change the name again because it's going to make it really difficult for everyone to just keep a track of what's going on. I find it funny because if I go to the um, Tableau Next uh, page, uh, just, just to give you a, a context, you go to Tableau Next. If you search Tableau Einstein, you actually get this page. It takes you to Tableau Next. And at the very bottom has a little, sort of, little section that I found quite, quite funny, which is keep up with Tableau Next. <laughs> it's funny because it just keeps changing. So you generally do need something to help you keep up with all these changes that are going on. So I just found that sort of small thing funny. And it's probably not funny to anyone inside of Salesforce, but nonetheless, it is what it is. The new Tableau has a new name. It's called Tableau Next. If you want to know more about it, either watch my previous video or wait for my next video, which will come out this week after this one where we'll do a 15 minute overview of what Tableau Next is. And just, just to be upfront, look, I'm really optimistic about this. I kind of think I'm the kind of person who can't dunk on something until they've tried it. I know that the beta for this product is around the corner. We don't have dates. Conference will probably be a really good opportunity to use it hands-on. I know some people will get access to it early before that. I'm really hoping I can be one of those people. So I'll obviously share that with you as soon as I get hands-on experience. 
there are also parts of this platform that are already available right now and it's actually a difficult thing to articulate i covered that in my previous video part of that is going to be about understanding salesforce platform the other part is going to be about just keeping in touch with all these updates as they happen and just engaging with your account manager or tableau or salesforce directly so that you make sure you get the pulse on what this is happening no pun intended but i'm going to end the video there because in my next video i'll go through this in a much more succinct way where we'll exclusively focus on the functionality but this video is just to let you know there's a new name it's the third name in my opinion and uh, hopefully it's the last change here <sighs> somehow i don't think that's going to be the case but nevertheless here we are thanks for watching i'll see you in the next one